In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use some of the settings under the optional settings section of the InfoSemantics slider component widget. So in our previous lesson, the interaction that we were using was in this state. We had our scrolling window set up with uh, two sliders working behind it. However, the handle on the right here was going all the way into the scroll bar buttons there. So we're going to fix that first. How do we do that? Well, fairly simple actually. We've just got to get our head around a certain concept. And that is when you're working with the slider component widget, what looks like is the track isn't necessarily the track. So what do I mean by that? Well, you, if I select the uh, image that we're currently using for the track right now, the scroll bar track image, you can see how its boundaries extend all the way into the scroll bar buttons. And that's why uh, the, the highlight box is also extending that far as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another object as the track for this slider. I'm going to add a highlight box and I'm going to get rid of the stroke around it. Then I'm going to select the scroll bar image here and shift select the uh, highlight box here and I'm going to pull down my align section. I'll align the highlight box to the scroll bar image and then I'm going to resize it so it's the same size as that just like that. Lovely. Let's put the align section back. Then I'm going to zoom in on this highlight box here and I'm going to resize it so it no longer goes over the top of the scroll bar buttons. Uh, go down the bottom and do that for the bottom one as well. Lovely. Okay, then we'll rename this highlight box. What will we call it? We'll call it scroll bar track other. Lovely, nice and descriptive. Press Control-1 to zoom back out. And then I'm going to double click on my scroll bar slider widget. And under the track section, I'm going to swap out scroll bar track for scroll bar track other and click OK. Let's press F8 to preview this slide and we'll see how that handle works. To start off with, it doesn't work at all because it's underneath the track and uh, I can click on it all I like, but I'm not going to get to it. So with the scroll bar widget, the stacking order of your interaction is up to you. The scroll bar widget does not change the stacking order of any of the items. So if I open up the timeline here, I've got to get my scroll bar track other object and pull it down so it is underneath the slider, the, the scroll bar handle. Okay, let's try that once again. Okay, so now when I try this out, the handle no longer goes over the top of the scroll bar buttons, but I've got this ugly highlight box working as my track. What can we do about that? Well, quite a lot. If I go back into the scroll bars widget, under the track section, you see I've got a checkbox there for hide. If I turn that on and then republish the movie, we will see that the widget has gone and hidden that highlight box, making it look like this image that we've got here is the track, but in actual fact, it's the scroll bar that is behind it. Okay, so we want to make this scroll bar work exactly like any scroll bar the user would encounter would work. So one thing that is common to many scroll bars is that if you click on the track, that will make the handle move to that point in the track. Well, we can activate that in our widget as well. I'm going to go back to the widget and under the accept user input section, I'm going to turn on track clicking. Press OK to that and we'll publish again. Now, if I click in the track section, you can see that the handle will move to that section. Okay, now what about these scroll bar buttons? Usually if we click those, then that will make the handle move up by a certain increment. Well, we can activate that as well. 
Let's close back out of the preview, go into our widget again. Under the optional settings section, there is a part there for scroll bar buttons. If we turn that on, we can put in a name for an object that will be used as the up button and a name for the object that will be used as a down button. So I'm going to name this one up button and the other one down button. Now underneath this, we have an area where we can set what's called the step size. That means how much the handle is going to move each time we click the up button or the down button. So in this circumstance, it's going to add 10 to the variable up here when either the up button or the down button is clicked. So if the down button is clicked 10 times, we should get to the bottom of the scroll bar. Okay, let's close out of that. And we've got to create this up button and this down button thing. So. I'm going to create myself another invisible highlight box, which I will tell you honestly is my weapon of choice in pretty much everything. Let's zoom in on that scroll bar area there. Okay, I'm going to put my highlight box over the top of this scroll bar button. Resize it so it works in just right. Lovely. I'm going to name this invisible highlight box up button. Okay, let's copy it and then paste it and we'll move it down to the bottom where we've got our down button and you can probably guess what's going to happen now. I'm going to place it so it's over the top of the down button and name it down, whoop, down button. Okay, control one to zoom out to normal zoomage and then F8 to test this movie and let's see how it works. Okay, now when I press the down button, the handle moves down, and when I press the up button, the handle moves up by 10 points each time. Okay, so lovely, there we go. One other thing that scroll bars usually do is that when we use the mouse wheel on our mouse, they'll move up and down. However, as you can see, I'm moving my mouse wheel here and this scroll bar is not responding to it. Well, we're going to have to enable this for this slider. Okay, close out of the preview. Once again, jump back into our widget. Under the accept user input section, there is a part there for, you guessed it, mouse wheel. Let's select that. There are a number of settings underneath there. Don't worry about those for the moment, with the exception that there is also a step size section there, which works pretty much exactly the same as the set step size section for the scroll bar buttons. That is, it allows you to determine how much the mouse wheel is going to scroll the handle by. Okay, let's try this. We'll go publish this slide again. Now when the interaction starts, I'm going to use my mouse wheel and as I move it down, we can see that the handle is moving down and then as I move it up, the handle is moving up. Fantastic job, bucko. Okay, however, there are some circumstances where using this mouse wheel gets a little troublesome. Let's have a look at one of them. We'll move back to slide two over here. You may remember this interaction from previous lessons. Okay, so what happens if we went into our top widget over here, we turned a mouse wheel, okay, and then we went into our bottom widget and we turned it on there as well. Okay, this is gonna get a little troublesome, you'll probably suspect. And you would suspect correctly. Okay, let's see what happens when we publish the movie. Okay, well, when I use my mouse wheel, you can see, oh yeah, that's moving nice. Okay, well, that's more or less working how we expect it to, but when I get here, oh no, no, and that's gone wrong. And then I go like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's all broken. People are dying everywhere, oh, it's horrible. Okay, how can we fix this? Well, inside the widget, if we go back there, there is a section there for roll over objects. If I select that, now when I roll over the slider, that is the only instance when the slider is going to respond to the mouse wheel. So let me go and do that for the bottom widget as well. Turn on roll over objects there. Test the movie again. So now if I have my mouse wheel outside the sliders here and I use my mouse wheel here, okay, you can see neither the sliders ro uh, rolling. But if I roll over one of the sliders and then I use my mouse wheel, 
Yet you can see that it is moving it there. Roll out, not moving, roll into the other one. Yep, that's moving. So that sort of fixes the problem there. But what if I wanted to have it that if my mouse was in the top half area of the Captivate uh, stage there, then I wanted the top slider to move to the mouse wheel. But if my mouse was over the bottom half area, then I wanted the bottom half of slider to move. Well, we can do that too. On stage here, I already have two invisible highlight boxes set up, one called top section and the other called bottom section. If I go back into the top widget here and in the rollover object section, if I put in the text field just to the right here, top section, the name of that area there, click OK, and then I go to my bottom widget and I put in bottom section there, click OK, and test the movie once again. We'll find now that even though my mouse is not over any of the sliders, it is moving them. However, I'm not getting that same conflict that I was before. And let's actually just go into one of the widgets and we'll get rid of the bound variable. Click OK and test that again because then it will be much more obvious which slider is currently being controlled by the mouse wheel. OK, here. Yep, the bottom mouse wheel is working, but if I roll over into the top, then the top one is working. So if you need to use the mouse wheel, you've got very fine control over that. Okay, before we finish off, let's just go back over to the, uh, the scrolling window example. Now, if I test the movie here, this is a sort of rare example uh, of where we wouldn't actually get a bug with this, but um, as you recall, this area of the scrolling window here, this is another slider, but usually when I grab the handle of a slider, it will move up and down. The only reason why it isn't in this case is because I've got this dirty gray image over the top of it with this invisible area that I can't click through to get to the bottom. However, if I brought the scroll area to the top so that it is now over the top of the frame, and then I tested the movie, now when I uh, mouse down on this list here, you can see that I'm able to scroll it up and down. Now that may be a bit of a problem because if you're using a desktop computer, generally uh, uh, these areas don't work like that. You can only move them up and down using the scroll bar over here. So how can we fix this? Well, what we can do is go back into this widget and we've been talking about the accept user input section over here. We've been turning on the mouse wheel, the track clicking and stuff like that. However, we can actually turn off user input altogether for this widget by going over here to the right side here and turning off that switch. Click OK to that. And now when we publish the movie, we'll see that when we move, we try and mouse down on the slider, we're not able to drag it. So this slider is now only able to be moved by its controlling variable. Okay, so we learned a lot in this lesson, but in the next lesson, we're going to learn even more, and it's going to be about the attached items section underneath the optional settings here, and all the wonderful things that you can do with it.